good afternoon and welcome back to Sahara TV. Uh, I'm sure you've been following the program so far. We've been having very interesting guests and uh, a lot of uh, issues that we discussed. Uh, as you know, it is Africa Day yesterday and also Eritrea was celebrating its independence. Uh, and uh, right now we have a guest on the show and his name is Esaias Isaac. He's uh, a brother to a uh, Swedish Eritrean journalist. His name is Dawit Isaac, who has been held without trial since September 2001. Uh, Dawit fled Eritrea during the Civil War and then decided to settle in Sweden. He's also the founder of Setit, the country's first independent newspaper, which was, you know, often critical of the Eritrean president, Mr. Isaias Afwaki. So Isaac was arrested along with a dozen of newspaper owners, editors, journalists uh, that were accused of being Ethiopian spies. So how are you doing today, uh, Esaias? Esaias, can you hear me? Hello, Esaias, can you hear me? Esaias, can you hear me? Oh, okay. Yeah, it seems like we've lost our guest. We're just going to try and reconnect with him. But in the meantime, um, as I say, this is the brother to Dawit Isaac, who's a Swedish Eritrean journalist who has been in custody under the Eritrean government for the last 10 uh, years. So his whereabouts are not known, but uh, we're just going to get some insight from his brother who's calling us from Sweden over the phone. So this is a phone interview. So we might have problems regarding our connection, but uh, we appreciate and expect you to please uh, bear with us. So it seems that uh, problems still persist. But anyway, uh, Esaias. Hello? Yes, hi, hi. We seem to, to have lost contact with you there. Yeah. Okay, welcome to the show. You're live with uh, on Sahara TV. Uh, we just Thank introduced you. uh, your brother, who's Isaac, uh, David David Isaac, and we've informed our viewers uh, about his plight. Uh, so far, we know that uh, Eritrea has a gross, uh, oppressive attitude towards journalists in the entire world, actually. So, can you please explain to us exactly what transpired leading to your brother's arrest in Eritrea? Yes, can you can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to find out what exactly happened to lead to your brother's arrest in Eritrea. Isaiah, are you with us? You, you hear me? Yeah, but your phone keeps cutting in and out. I was asking you a question and I wanted to find out what exactly led to your brother's arrest. Can you explain to us and the viewers? I think we're having problems with your audio there because I get in and out signals and I'm not too sure whether it's your service or network where you are can you hear me if you can please let me know that you can hear me you're there besides you're there i'm here okay mm -hmm. Yeah, um, you are the founder of the Free Dawit Comedy. Uh, what efforts have you made towards his freedom and uh, were you getting any help from anyone? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think a lot of people in Sweden are involved. In, um, we started uh, in the autumn 2004 and um, we try to make opinion in Sweden and the rest of the world to 
can help the village Dawi and also to get a little bit focused on what's happening in Eritrea today. Right. So, um, but it's also it's very difficult because it's, you can't get any information from Eritrea and uh, definitely not information about the Isaac's case. And uh, just uh, now, I don't know where he is. He's somewhere in Eritrea and the Eritrean authority, they don't want to tell us where he is. So um, sometimes it feels quite difficult to work. Right. So I, I know that um, obviously you've organized campaigns, you've had petitions and also actions to pressure that government to release your brother. And I know sometime yeah. in 2011, the European Union and the Swedish government kind of like teamed up to uh, have their legal and diplomatic powers to, 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 yeah. to help bring dialogue and also shed a little light on, 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 on your brother. Uh, how did this work mm -hmm. out? So, sorry to take the last thing I didn't hear you. Yeah, I said that in 2011, the European Union yeah. and the Swedish government teamed up because your brother is also a Swedish citizen. So exactly. they were trying to legally and diplomatically push mm -hmm. Eritrea to release or at least, you know, uh, uh, give shed some more light into his arrest. How far did this mm -hmm. go? How, how did this effort go? Uh, it, it has uh, n nothing has happened since uh, 2001 because still the Eritreans they don't want to talk about uh, this case and they say this is uh, not for Sweden or not for the rest of the world. Uh, we know how we handle uh, like David Isaac. So um, nothing happened, and um, I mean, uh, what the Eritrean uh, government to do is to tell us where he is and uh, if he's in uh, bad health he would uh, actually get medical uh, treatment but uh, nothing has happened so um, sometimes you feel uh, <laughs> would you also hopeless. think that the Swedish government is paying like a silent diplomacy to this issue because uh, I would think that such a powerful government with a government like Eritrea you know in opposition they would be able to make mm. tracks, at least give a clear picture of what's happening. Everybody doesn't seem to know. The last information we we, we know mm. is uh, that uh, you, you uh, as his family have last knew or spoke to him when uh, that's like five years ago when he was released briefly and then rearrested three days later. So his whereabouts are completely unknown. It's dark. So do you think that the Swedish government has also uh, been partially paying a silent diplomacy to this case? Uh, I, what I can see is after 10 years, I mean 10 and a half years, they would change the strategy because of this government in Eritrea, they don't, uh, they don't care about silent diplomacy or whatever diplomacy is. But um, actually I don't know, also know what kind of diplomacy they, they could use. Because uh, Eritrea doesn't have any diplomacy with, uh, uh, oh, they don't have diplomacy with so many countries. So, um, but the silent diplomacy should uh, maybe used in two, three years, but not in like ten and a half years, because uh, he's still in prison. Adult. Okay, I know that uh, some time ago uh, it was quoted that a former guard. Uh, sometime in 2011, to be precise, uh, he was quoted as saying that uh, your brother was in a high security uh, secret prison somewhere in Asmara. Uh, do you yeah. think this is where he is? And there was a report that he was also in poor health uh, because he's been denied medical attention, he's been denied access to his family, he's been yeah. locked up and segregated in a cell, only allowed out once for maybe an hour or so, you know, just mm -hmm. to see the outside world. Is this uh, the information you also have up to date? Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, he, he's in, in bad health. I mean, <laughs> you can imagine how, how it is for him to be to be in this uh, situation for so many years. But um, it's a lot of uh, people who say they know where Dawit is, uh, but uh, I mean, I can't trust everyone uh, because uh, the government doesn't speak. They don't say where he is. So how can uh, people on the street say he is there or he's there? But 
for me, it's um, try to get focused to to release him, and um, it's also sometimes you 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 think okay, some people say he is here, which means it can be true. Um, but like every summer, I get the news from people who are coming back from Eritrea. Say I I know your brother is here. Your brother is. Uh, in this area, uh, some of them also say, I, I have seen your brother on the street, and uh, but I don't trust them because uh, <laughs> I, I, why should they show him after so many years in, in prison? Wow. Okay, so I know that um, Eritrea has been independent since 1993, and this is, you know, the freedom, they, the, the independence you received from Ethiopia. And... Uh, there's been a lot of criticism uh, on the implementation of democratic reforms in the country, and this is obviously under uh, President Isaias Afuraki. Um, and we hear that his health has not been well. I don't know, he's denied these uh, allegations uh, in the media, and obviously the Eritrean people have been very worried as to who, if at all these rumors are true, might be his successor. Mm. There's also been rumors that he might be grooming his own son to, to take over. Do you think this is any closer to the truth? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. It's difficult to, to because that regime, they can change uh, their... Uh, they speak every day, so... Um, it's quite difficult to, to know what's happening inside in Eritrea and how, how what the protected they have. Uh, but they they always said from the Eritrean government, we we can't release the wheat before we have uh, because we have a border conflict. So they always use to the border conflict with Ethiopia to 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 hold the wheat and his. Uh, his friends. So um, I don't know. Uh, maybe we can. The world can get more. Uh, more. Say. The, if the world can get what? Sorry, you broke up a little bit there. Sorry. I said the last statement. You wanted to say if the world can do what? We we, we seem to have lost you. Yeah, I mean the world maybe can get more uh, attention to to. to uh, to uh, help to both of these countries to to make uh, the border conflict. Uh, what what uh, suggestion I mean, would you give to the world in terms of giving attention? Maybe that's not already been done. What do you want to tell the world? You know to 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 do. To yeah, help? I mean the, the world must get attention about the human rights situation in Eritrea. I mean the case of, we have a lot of uh, cases like Dalit Isaac in Eritrea. So um, it's time for the world to, to see what's happening inside in Eritrea, and the, a lot of the young Eritreans they are uh, they are going to Ethiopia and Sudan uh, every week, every month. So um, yeah, I, I hope something can happen uh, because the Eritreans uh, they are in very very poor health, all of the uh, Eritrean people. Okay, so I guess you can actually classify this Eritrean government as a dictatorship because obviously when people are yeah it is I mean uh, he has rights, been there since and, charged and, and held without any trial that is a gross abuse of human rights and it's very you know accurate to say that this is really a dictatorship no I mean Eritrea is a dictator I mean we have one leader one uh, there is no independent press. It's a lot of journalists and uh, different politicians in prisoner, and um, you, you don't have uh, the the right to freedom, uh, the religion of freedom also. So um, yeah, from my side, it's a dictator, and you can also see uh, what Amnesty Human Rights Watch and um, RSS uh, reporting without borders say about Eritrea. The report who comes every year. Say that Eritrea is number 177 on their index list in reporting that border. Right. So, um, so of course, yeah, of course it, it's dictated, but uh, I hope also something can change in Eritrea so um, people like Dawit and um, and people in Eritrea can 
can yeah. live in, in uh, freedom. I see. Now, I know that he was arrested together with, uh, I think there were 10 people, 10 journalists, and then 13 others who were politicians. Have these yeah. uh, people, have been? have they been found? Does anybody have any news? Has any one of them free since? Uh, no, I mean, I heard that some of them have died. In custody? No of them is uh, free, um, so um, nobody knows uh, what's happening with them and uh, w w where they are now. It's uh, from the people from Parliament and the, the, the journalist who was the arrested in, in September 2001. Right. So um, they are. Okay. Anyway, um, I was going to ask you, we we're about to wind up uh, this interview. I was going to ask, uh, he obviously has a family. Yeah. How many kids does he have? He has three kids here in Sweden. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, and I hope that uh, at least one day maybe yeah, he's going to be too. free and freed very soon. Uh, what would you... Lastly, want to say, uh, I know that you are the founder of this Free Dawit Committee, this uh, movement. Yes. What do, you, what kind of help would you want the people to give you in particular to help? Uh, yeah, raise I mean, they can sign on the petition on uh, freedawit.com, and they can send the mail to us uh, in all over the world to get more pressure to the Eritrean government. And uh, also, um, I mean, to, to, to help, uh, it's not only the weight, it's a lot of people who are in West Eritrea, so this is even for the rest of the Eritrean people. Then, um, when you spoke to people on the inside, they say, please help us. Uh, so, uh, we have responsibility, especially we from Eritrea, but uh, anyone can help us, you know, and I'm happy. Okay. Anyway, thank you very much, um, Mr. Isaac. Uh, that was Esaias Isaac, who's the brother to the Swedish Eritrean journalist who's been incarcerated without trial since September 2001 in Eritrea. Uh, he was joining us by phone, uh, and um, we were just basically trying to find out uh, the plight. <laughs>